Hello everyone, I am Dr. Namita Verma, Assistant Professor, Department of Economics, Uttarakhand Open University. Today, I am going to take a lecture on classification of money. Money assumes so many forms in real life that it is difficult to identify what constitutes money and what not. Different economists have classified money in different forms. There are three main reasons for the classification of money. Number one, classification money on the basis of nature of money. Number two, classification of money on the basis of legality. Number three, classification of money on the basis of money commodity. The more important classification of money are as follows. According to Keynes, number one, actual money and money of account. Actual money is that which actually circulates in the economy. It is used as a medium of exchange for goods and services in a country. For example, paper notes of different denominations and coins in actual circulation in India constitute the actual money. Money of account is that form of money in terms of which the accounts of a country are maintained and transactions made. For example, rupee is the money of account in India. Generally, actual money and money of account are the same for a country. However, sometimes actual money may be different from the money of account. For example, rupee and paise is the money of account in India. In real practice, however, one pesa coin is nowhere visible. Number two is commodity money and representative money. Commodity money is made up of certain metals and its face value is equal to its intrinsic value. It is also referred to as full bodied money. Representative money, on the other hand, is generally made either of cheap metals or paper notes. The intrinsic value of the representative money is less than its face value. Currency notes and coins are good examples of representative money in India. What is representative money? Representative money may or may not be converted into full-bodied money. Money of account. Now let us talk about the money of account. We use money to pay for goods and services. It is how we exchange things among each other. Frank, a hypothetical handyman running his own business, has to wonder though how we as a society determine the value of money and why it has replaced the barter system of trading. What if Frank could just get by in life from trading his services as a handyman for food, rent and all other things he needs? Let's take a look at how money ser Let's take a look at how money serves as a standard of value, a store of value and a medium of exchange that makes financial activities easier to understand and practice classification of money on the basis of legality. One is legal tender money. Legal tender money is the currency which has got legal sanction or approval by the government. It means that the individual is bound to accept it in exchange for goods and services. It can't be refused in settlement of payments of any kind. Both coins and currency notes are legal tender. They have the backing of government. They serve as money on the fiat order of the government. But a person can legally refuse to accept payment through checks because there is no guarantee that a check will be honored by the bank in the case of insufficient deposits with it. Now let us talk about the limited legal tender money. Limited legal tender money is the money that can be accepted only up to a certain maximum limit. 
For example, in India, one paise coin to 25 paise coin is legal tender up to rupees 25. One can refuse payments in these small coins beyond the sum of rupees 25. Now, second is unlimited legal tender money. It is the money that a person has to accept without any limit of amount. For example, all currency notes and coins of 50 pesa are unlimited legal tender money. Now, let us talk about the optional money. Optional money is not is non-legal tender but is generally accepted by the people in final payments. It consists of credit instruments like bill of exchange, checks, handiest, etc. which do not enjoy any statutory backing. Nobody could be forced to accept this type of money. The acceptance of optional money depends upon the choice of a person. On the basis of the money commodity, money is classified as commodity money, metallic money and paper money. Commodity money or full bodied money. Commodity money is that money whose value comes from a commodity of which it is made up of. Commodity money consists of objects having values or use in themselves or what we call intrinsic value as well as their value in buying goods. Examples of commodities that have been used as media of exchange including gold, silver, copper, salt, peppercorns, tea, decorated bells, shells, alcohol, cigarettes, cannabis, silk, candy, nails, cocoa beans, curries and barley. Now let us talk about metallic money. The money that is made from some metals like gold, silver, copper etc was called metallic money. It can further be classified as full bodied money. It is also known as a standard money. Its value as a commodity is equal to its value of money. Number two is token coins. It is one whose value as money for example, its face value is significantly greater than its intrinsic value, like the value of the commodity from which it is made. Then money made up of paper is known as paper money or currency notes. Paper money can further be classified into three categories. Number one, representative paper money. It is backed by equivalent amount of gold and silver reserves. Number two is convertible paper money. When the government or central bank gives the guarantee for the conversion of paper money into or silver at a fixed price, then this paper money is termed as convertible paper money. Third is inconvertible paper money. When the government of a country does not bear any responsibility for its conversion into gold or silver, then it is termed as inconvertible paper money. Presently, this money is in circulation in India. Thank you so much.